It is day 39 of the Israel-Hamas war and there is one question that everyone is asking. Why is Israel targeting hospitals in Gaza? Why has it put medical facilities under siege? And the answer to these questions depends on who you ask. Israel saying it is because Hamas is operating from bunkers underneath the said hospitals. The Palestinians denying the charge. They are accusing Israel of committing war crimes and targeting civilians. And these warring narratives have left civilians and patients in the crosshairs, many of them fighting for their lives, with supplies running out. What is the way out of this and how is this going to end, if at all? And above all, who really is speaking the truth? To start with, which hospitals and medical facilities are we talking about? There are many, but the names of six stand out. The Al Shifa Hospital in northern Rimal, the Ramtisi Hospital in northern Gaza, the Al Ahli Hospital in northern Gaza, the Al Quds Hospital in Gaza's Tel Al Hawa area, the Al Nasr Hospital in northern Gaza, and the Al Swedi or Swedish Clinic. All these places have either witnessed or are witnessing attacks by Israeli forces. Let's begin with the Al Shifa Hospital, the largest medical complex in the Gaza Strip, located in the neighborhood of northern Rimal. As I speak, it is in the grip of absolute mayhem. Israeli forces have encircled the hospital as doctors inside fight to save the lives of their patients. Just have a look at these images. They show newborns inside the hospital, some wrapped in green fabric for warmth, others wearing only cloth diapers. The doctors looking after them saying that their lives are in grave danger with every passing minute. At the pediatric department of Al Shifa Hospital, we have the intensive care unit and department for lightweight babies under 1.5 kg, as well as the department of moderate cases. I have 39 cases. The hospital's management called me and told me today, you do not have electricity, you have to leave the department. They were all babies, and this couldn't happen. They needed an incubator, heater, a humidity system. Therefore, it was not possible to evacuate the babies. So why has Israel surrounded this hospital, you ask? Because Hamas operatives are apparently hiding in its vicinity. At least that is what the IDF is claiming. It says that... There is a Hamas command center underneath the Al Shifa hospital, a center which is effectively using patients and staff as human shields. And this center apparently houses the senior most operatives of the group. Is there any evidence to back Israel's claims? Well, the IDF displayed satellite photographs of the hospital with quote-unquote military command elements marked on it. Israel says this is the only true material it has on its hands for now. Hamas systematically exploits hospitals as part of its war machine. Here, the IDF identified a launch, a launch pad, meaning they launch rockets from here. I want to repeat it. They launch rockets on Israel 75 meters from an hospital. Why? They know precisely that if Israel will airstrike a launch pad like that, the hospital would be damaged. So are these claims being rebutted? Yes. Hamas officials are calling them propaganda. A British doctor working at the hospital has called the claim a quote-unquote outlandish excuse. Even the Human Rights Watch, a U.S. campaign group, has said that it could not corroborate the Israeli allegation. To counter these allegations, Israel is pointing at what it discovered at the Ramtisi Hospital. It is one of Gaza's biggest pediatric care centers, or should I say, it was the biggest. Just have a look at the visuals on your screen. They show the Israeli forces inside the hospital compound. They claimed control of it over the weekend. Why? Because according to Israel, the hospital was reportedly used to hold hostages. The video claims to show a basement facility at the hospital, which the Hamas used to store its weapons and keep Israeli hostages. Israel also saying that the hospital was connected to a tunnel with a bulletproof door. 
Hamas has denied this claim, calling it a well-crafted campaign of lies. Just have a look at this. This is Rantisi Hospital, and this is the place where I showed you the tunnel. I want you to see. Look at what Hamas is holding inside the hospital. I want you to understand, this kind of gear is a gear for a major fight. People shooting RPGs from hospitals. This is Hamas, firing RPGs from hospitals. The world has to understand who is Israel fighting against. And next, we have the Al Quds Hospital. Visuals from the hospital showing medical teams working with torch lights. Why? Because electricity supply to the hospital has been cut off. And that's not even all. Over the weekend, at least one person was killed at the hospital. 28 others were injured, most of them children. Israel says it did not target civilians. It only fired on Hamas operatives firing from the hospital. In any case, the Palestinian Red Crescent says this hospital has also been rendered out of service. Listen to this. Sorrow, pain, anger, discontent and disappointment. These are our feelings today after we had to announce Al-Qaeda's hospital in Gaza City is out of service. After a whole week of calling on the international community and humanitarian organizations for the necessity to let aid come in urgently to al Qaeda's hospital, the hospital was left to face its destiny on its own under non-stop bombardment which put the lives of our medical staff and patients in danger. Today, we say that the international community and all countries signing the Geneva Convention are fully responsible of the collapse of the healthcare system in the Gaza Strip. Now here's the thing. These claims and counterclaims over the hospitals have raised some pressing questions. Questions about what is allowed under international laws governing war, under international humanitarian law. Hospitals are given special protections during times of war. They cannot become battlegrounds. That said, hospitals can lose their protections if combatants use them to hide fighters or store weapons. At least that is what the International Committee of the Red Cross says. But even if they lose this status, shouldn't there be warnings given before the attacks to allow for the safe evacuation of the patients? Israel says it is giving these warnings. The other side saying the warnings are coming too late. We are, of course, yet to hear the last of this story. And earlier today, we spoke to Palestinian journalist Motea Ibrahim. He is based in the central area of the Gaza Strip and is currently stationed in the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital. We asked him what the condition is like at the hospital, also whether it's at risk of running out of supplies and medicines. Here's what he told us. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. As, as you are following, and as you know, that uh, uh, the situation here is deteriorating every uh, moment uh, on a regular basis. Uh, it's getting worse and worse. As, as you know, till this moment, there is no access to the uh, medical uh, basic needs and equipment, actually, in addition to the ongoing uh, of the Palestinian injuries and the Palestinian wanted people and the Palestinian casualties as the Israeli occupation forces are still maintaining uh, their strikes against several areas of Gaza Strip. Every moment, every moment, uh, the ambulances actually bring, uh, bring Palestinian casualties left behind the Israeli continuous air strikes. Uh, regarding the medical, regarding the medical situation, the hospital is totally overwhelmed with the number of the Palestinian casualties, with the number of the Palestinian wounded, because, as you know, this number is incrementally increasing with the ongoing air strike. Bed bugs have been making headlines over the last few days. These pesky creatures hiding in the shadows of mattresses, patiently waiting for nightfall, and they then emerge from the crevices. As scary as this sounds, this is the truth about these uh, red creatures and with bed bugs making headlines every day. It seems like these parasites are making an international comeback. Our next report telling you more. Last month, the deputy mayor of Paris, Emmanuel Grigua, 
stood in front of a French TV camera with a serious look on his face and said, no one is safe. No, he wasn't talking about the threat of climate change or some serious virus. He was talking about bed bugs. For the blissfully unaware, bed bugs are small wingless insects that bite humans and feast on blood, often at night. They find us by sensing the carbon dioxide in our breath and on our body heat. They carry a large number of pathogens. Even though bed bugs do not transmit diseases to humans, they do produce itchy welts. In recent weeks, in France, while the capital city was hosting the Rugby World Cup and also preparing to host the 2024 Olympics, travelers posted photos and videos purportedly showing the bed bugs on the Paris Metro and high-speed trains. They also showed videos of bed bugs at the Charles de Gaulle airport. The infestation then sparked a concern that the outbreak would quickly spread to the United Kingdom. But some experts say the bugs were already present on London's public transport network and in cinemas, hospitals and other public spaces. A local pest control company said it had seen at least 65% spike in cases of bed bugs in Britain in the second quarter of this year as compared to a year earlier. Bed bug infestations have also caused concern in other parts. Since last month, at least 30 suspected or confirmed infestations have been reported in South Korea. And considering the severity, Authorities in Seoul have also set aside 500 million won, which is over 300,000 US dollars. The money is meant for setting up a response team to take on the bedbugs. After South Korean officials announced a four week campaign aimed at eradicating the pests, Hong Kong airport authorities went on a high alert and started distributing bedbug warning leaflets to passengers at the airport warning foreign passengers arriving in Hong Kong and locals returning to the city about bedbug prevention and control. Fears of a bedbug invasion have led to panic buying of insect killers and a leap in inquiries about pest control. In Singapore, major pest control firms are reporting an increase in infestation numbers and predicting that there will be more to come. Experts say bedbugs have developed resistance to many pesticides, which is the main line of defense for so many countries. While it is hard to eradicate bedbugs, it's relatively easy to avoid them. It's important that infestations are treated quickly when discovered, as bedbugs rapidly reproduce, and if left untreated, one will be left with thousands to tackle. Bedbugs can be a risk to public health resulting in a number of health implications including skin rashes, psychological effects and allergic symptoms. Bureau Report, we on Wild is One. Scientists say that statistically every person roughly has at least six doppelgangers out there in the world. That means there could be seven people with your face including you. But have you ever thought of having a digitally produced twin? A digital twin who can be experimented on to identify the best possible treatment without you actually having to go near a pill or a surgeon's knife? With the latest developments, it seems like that might be possible. The algorithm of artificial intelligence has gone a step further in the field of medicine. And scientists have now made it possible to believe that within five to ten years, in serico trials, virtual organs will be used to assess the safety and efficacy of drugs that will help individuals get personalized treatments and avoid medical complications. While various companies are already using patient-specific heart, model, heart models to help design medical devices, a Barcelona-based startup is offering companies the ability to test drugs and devices on, stim on simulated models of human hearts. Apart from offering various benefits to the heart patients, this cutting-edge technology is also expected to offer benefits to cancer patients. 
To make this possible, AI experts at the drug company GSK have already started working with cancer researchers at King's College London. Experts during the trials will build digital replicas of patients' tumors by using images and genetic and molecular data as well as growing patients' cancer cells in 3D and testing how they respond to the drugs. And with the transformation of medicine from analog to digital, scientists in the future will now be able to predict how individual patients are likely to respond to different drugs, combinations of drugs and dosing regimens. This AI-produced digital twins discovery is all set to simulate solutions in complicated conditions of pregnancy. Researchers during the course of their trials will help develop drugs for conditions like placental insufficiency and also offer a better understanding of the physiological processes underpinning pregnancy and labor. Although developing a virtual model of the human body remains a far-fetched proposition, the potential of the digital twin to revolutionize management of electronic healthcare records is beyond question. A patient-specific digital twin can enable doctors to pursue a more comprehensive course of treatment by combining their knowledge of the human physiology with the real-time clinical data for running predictive simulations of infections and other disorders. Future generations could be able to use this data to test new theories, also practice uh, also evolving medical practices and finding ways to rapidly advance and improve the patient outcomes.